Hi, I'm George A. Savito, and I'm one of the pastors here at Grace Church. And I want to, again, thank you for being a part of this, the Circle Maker small group. I have been in prayer for you, and I'm hoping that uh, the small group that, that you're in is uh, really transforming your life and really encouraging you in your walk with God. Uh, last week, I, I talked about this prayer book that, that I uh, kept in my chest of drawers next to my bed for many, many years. A list of things that I had uh, written out in detail that I prayed that Grace Church would become, even before I knew I was sent to Grace Church. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about my, my first days uh, here at the Cape Coral campus. Uh, in, in my first days here, uh, I, I got here and the church uh, was struggling in, in many different ways. Uh, it was filled with wonderful people, mind you. Uh, they were not bad people. They were very, very good people who frankly had just lost their way, had kind of wandered off the vision that God gives every local church. And so part of my assignment was to remind our church of what our vision was about. I remember those first uh, eight weeks that I was here, I preached a series of sermons entitled The Exciting Church. And we talked about how God was the one who established the church, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that if we could cooperate with God, that God could do a great thing in our church. Now, what was kind of going on behind the scenes, unknown to many people who are a part of the congregation, was that there was a serious debt on the sanctuary. Uh, years earlier, we had built a beautiful sanctuary that we worship in today uh, for about $1.2 million. And so when I got here, uh, we were paying an interest-only note uh, on that debt. And uh, almost 75% of every dollar that was coming in was going to pay that note. As a matter of fact, um, my first week here, uh, a friend who was balancing the checkbook at Grace Church came to me and told me that we had $29.16 in the checking account, that we owed $1.2 million on the sanctuary, that there was $20,000 worth of unpaid bills, and there was a little envelope from the IRS that we owed back taxes on the few employees that we had hired. Uh, we were struggling, not just in vision, but we were struggling fiscally. We were struggling financially. And so a group of leaders got together and we began to pray about how we might address that debt. Now, again, my first Sunday here, there was 300 people in worship. And so uh, we weren't the very large congregation that we are today, significantly smaller. Uh, you could gather all the children, zero, through fifth grade and you could fit them in one of our small Sunday school classrooms. And so very different than the environment of Grace Church today. And so uh, that group of leaders began to pray and we decided that we would have a capital campaign and that we would seek to address the debt uh, on the sanctuary. Now you have to understand the hardest money to raise in church life is debt retirement. And uh, to, the idea of raising $1.2 million was way beyond anything that we could dream of. But we had this, this big, hairy, audacious goal that we would be able to raise $600,000 over three years. So we went through a series of sermons and a series of meetings, and we invited those who call Grace Church their spiritual home to above the tithe and the offering to give to God to the building fund uh, so that we could retire this debt. I'll, I'll never forget that my friend Marty Wilkinson uh, on that final Sunday when we were turning in our pledge cards, handed me a sheet of paper uh, before I got up to preach at the last service. Uh, he had been in the back receiving the pledge cards, and he handed me this little piece of paper that said that we had raised $603,245. And he wrote on the bottom, God is good all the time. $603,000. Now, we didn't know whether we could raise $50,000. But in those early days, a group of faithful people prayed and raised over a half a million dollars, $600,000, to help retire the debt on the sanctuary. It was a miracle. You see, because God really does honor bold prayers. Uh, it's not always about money. Sometimes it's about our children and our hopes and desires for our children. Sometimes it's about our health and our deep desire to walk in wholeness of life. Sometimes it's about our emotional well-being and our impulsive desires, and we wonder whether we can truly be free. Well, the truth is that God invites us to pray circles 
around these impossible situations in our life so that we might experience the goodness of God. You see, God really cares about you. Just like a mother and a father care for her children, your God in heaven cares about you. And He invites you to, as His child, pray these bold prayers and watch God show off in your life.